everyone, welcome back, or welcome to, should I say, the first video of 2016. I hope you've all had an amazing new year. I spent my New Year's Eve sitting on the sofa in my pyjamas watching films, and it was a great, great time. Not to start this video off on a negative note, but as you can probably hear by my disgusting voice, I still have a cold, so I'm sorry if I sound a little bit weird and a bit croaky. But never mind, I'm really excited to start off a whole new year's worth of videos and I thought what better way to start than with a 2015 beauty roundup. So I've done quite a few of these over the past few years. I will leave them all linked down below if you want to go and catch up. I think I started in 2014 so there's a good chunk of videos there to watch. So you know the drill by now, I do these in two parts. The first one today is going to be my makeup favourites and then I'm going to do skincare and a few other bits in a few days time. I've been through all my monthly favourites from the last year and kind of watched them and checked out what I was talking about throughout the whole year. So these aren't just things that I'm loving at the moment, they're things that I've been loving all year long. I will try and go through things as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna start off with the first category, which is best primer. And this for me this year has definitely been the Sunday Riley Effortless Breathable Tinted Primer. It's kind of more between a tinted moisturizer and a primer. At first, I thought this was just a kind of colored tinted cream, but it does actually have some really great priming benefits. It helps my makeup last a lot longer. And the whole formula is very fluid and quite hydrating so it keeps my skin very moisturized throughout the day. I tend to find things that are just more hydrating work better for me in making my makeup last a lot longer so this I love. I also just sometimes wear this on its own because it does have a slight tint to it so if you're just going for a very natural makeup look and you want your skin to be able to breathe and really not have much product on it that's a really great one to try as well. And then best foundation has to go to one of my favorite makeup discoveries of all this year which is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation I honestly think Charlotte Tilbury can do no wrong when it comes to new releases. It's definitely a very, very full coverage foundation and I do tend to favour lighter bases these days, but when my skin's kind of acting up and it's a bit blemishy and just not looking generally that great, like it is at the moment because I've been eating way too much junk food at Christmas, I always reach for this because I just know it's going to make everything look a lot smoother, it's going to get rid of any redness and it also just looks a lot like skin. It's not one of those full coverage foundations that really just masks out your face, it makes it look very natural and very much like your own skin and I really love foundations that do that. I've also included the category of best budget foundation and that for me was the L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour matte foundation. I seriously loved this stuff when it came out. I was honestly using it non-stop and it wasn't until I found the Charlotte Tilbury one that I kind of put this down for a little bit. The coverage is quite full again and yet it still manages to make your skin look quite radiant which is a funny one because it's definitely a matte foundation, it's actually called a matte foundation but it still gives your skin this kind of inner glow and it just lasts for such a long time this really does stay on your face and stay perfect for as long as you're wearing it so if I had to pick from budget foundations this is definitely my favorite and then the category of lighter bases which is probably my most worn category of foundation this is the only thing I think that I've doubled up for because I just cannot pick between them these two you're definitely familiar with because I've just mentioned them so many times in my videos this year and they are the Shantakai Just Skin Tinted Moisturizer and then the Bare Minerals Complexion rescue and I just can't pick between the two as to which is my favourite. The Bare Minerals one is probably a little bit thinner, a bit more fluidy and then the Shantakai one is just that little bit more moisturising but they both look so beautiful on the skin. They really just give this glow that I haven't seen any other base product manage to mimic and no matter how much of them I put on, even if it's just a very tiny, tiny amount, they still smooth my skin out beautifully. They make it look really, really even and they are just tinted moisturisers so the fact that they have really minimal coverage and they still manage to do that amazes me. So I love both of these. That will be the biggest rave probably of this entire video. Those two I just can't pick between. Concealer on the other hand was actually quite easy to narrow down and I'm quite a concealer hoarder. I do have a lot of different concealers but really there's only been one or two that I've relied on this year and that I've really grown to love and this one in particular I think is just my favourite of all of them. It's another one from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Mini Miracle Eye Wand and this is actually a double ender concealer. There's an eye cream in one end and a brightening concealer in the other. Honestly, I don't really use the eye cream, but the brightening concealer is just the best under eye concealer I've ever, ever come across. So brightening, it gets rid of dark circles just in an instant. I don't have to wear anything underneath this. It just works perfectly on its own. I've never come across a brightening concealer with this much coverage in it. They tend to be quite thin and more for highlighting, so like the YSL Touche Eclat, but this just does everything you want it to. And for under eyes, you cannot beat it. Next category is best powder. 
This one is just a repeat offender. It's been in probably every single yearly roundup I've ever filmed and it's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. This one is Diffused Light and it's come to be the shade that I just rely on for setting my makeup. It does have a slight yellow tint to it so it is good for balancing out redness but honestly I think this is just more of a kind of translucent type powder that just gives your skin an amazing glow. It really does take away any kind of cakiness that might come normally with powder. It sets makeup down beautifully and just gives you a really beautiful glow. So this will always probably be my favourite powder. It's actually lasted for so long, I still haven't hit pan. It's still going strong so I will continue using it until it's all gone. I also actually have it in the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit that they brought out this year. I'm pretty sure this is still available. If not, I'm sorry for taunting you with it but I did want to give it a quick mention because it has the Diffuse Light powder in it and it also has a few other powders and then the blusher and the bronzer too. And this has become one of my favourite face palettes of the year. I just absolutely love it. It's just beautiful. It speaks for itself. It's amazing. Best bronzer is another limited product that I honestly didn't want to love as much as I do. Not only because the price tag is just staggering but because it is no longer available. So again I am sorry for taunting you with this one but it's the Chanel Le Beige powder and this is the Healthy Glow powder. The formula of this one is so creamy and so blendable. It's beautiful and the colour as well is probably what makes me love it the most. It's a very ready tone bronzer and I find those quite hard to come across bronzers tend to be more orangey and yellowy these days so that one has been my most used and most worn bronzer and then for the category of contour contour is definitely something that I got a little bit more into this year I'm still quite a novice and I still can't really do it very well but my favorites are these kind of contour sticks and this one in particular from NARS has probably been the one I've used the most and the most successfully I haven't seen these on a NARS counter recently and it would be a very big shame if they had discontinued them hopefully they haven't but this is the lighter of the three contour shades that they do. So there's quite a big range for different skin tones. I just find this one has a really great formula. It's definitely matte, so it doesn't have a sheen to it, but it's still quite easy to blend in. Favorite blusher goes to another one from Hourglass. These are the ambient lighting blushes. I think everything from the entire ambient lighting range I just love. This one in particular though is Diffused Heat. It's a very warm tone, very corally blusher. It's the kind of shade that I always reach for, one that I just know suits my skin and is quite flattering. So this has been my most worn, most used blusher of the year. So best highlighter is one that definitely stole my heart this year. And sadly, I still haven't gotten around to fixing it. I'm pretty wary of actually opening it up. I might give it a try. There we go, I must try not to spill this all over my bed. But it's the Becca Jaclyn Hill collaboration. It is Champagne Pop, of course. This has just become my favorite highlighting shade of all time. I absolutely love it. It's so beautifully warm toned and yet it never looks like you've got a kind of bronzy looking highlight. It just really warms up your skin, makes it look so glowy. Instant disco ball face, which I definitely, definitely love. So this little thing has become probably one of my favorite products of the entire year. Definitely my favorite launch or favorite collaboration. And I will get round to fix it, I promise. I have some rubbing alcohol in the post on its way to me, so as soon as that is here I will attempt to resurrect it because it just needs to be back in my life. A quick mention to brows before I get on to eyes and lips. And this one will come as no surprise to all of you. My favourite brow product has to be the Soap and Glory Archery Pencil. It's just the best thing. I don't feel like my brows are finished without this. I can use powders and things like that, but without this on to kind of define my brows as the final step, it just never looks the same. So this thing, which is probably my 10th or 11th, is just the best brow product I've ever come across. The only downside is that these come in just two colours. So Soap and Glory, if you could make more colours of this, that would be great. Now, I don't often go for single eyeshadows. I tend to kind of stick to palettes these days just because they're so much more convenient but I have included the category of best single eyeshadow and for me this year there has actually been one that I've used quite a bit and it's from MAC. This is the shade Cork. I've used this one a lot for a blending colour. I think it's a really great transitional shade. It's slightly warm tone but it is still quite pale and quite taupey. I've got it on today as a kind of crease colour and it just works nicely at balancing out the more metallic shades so this one I actually reach for quite a bit when I want something just quite matte and neutral. And then also favourite single eyeshadow but in a cream formula has to be the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerise. I actually love all of these, all of the shades are beautiful but this is probably the one that I use the most and it's Betty Davis. It's a very rusty antique version of gold, it's almost a little bit copper but this on 
its own with just mascara and a red lip is so beautiful. And the formulas of these are so pigmented. They have a lot of color payoff. And once they're on, they're on there. They really set down so they last a really long time. Next category is probably the one that took the most deliberating and the most deciding to come up with a winner. It's best eyeshadow palette. This really has been the year of eyeshadow palettes. I have fell in love with so many and I really have used a lot of them. There was the Naked Smoky palette that I really liked in the summer. The Stila in the Light palette that I'm obviously wearing a lot at the moment. But I think just purely down to the amount of wear and the amount of times I've actually reached for it. It has to be the Lorac Pro palette that comes out on top. I honestly don't think there is anything you couldn't do with this. It has matte shades, it has shimmers, it has dark colours, it has light colours, it has everything you need for any eye look. The formulas are really rich and pigmented, they're very velvety, they blend well. I just think this is an amazing all-rounder, it's definitely served me well, but sadly it's only available in the US, which is quite a shame because it's just so, so good, but if you are heading to America anytime soon, definitely pick one of these up because it's so worth it. Best eyeliner, again, is one that took me quite a while to choose. I've kind of got back into eyeliner a lot this year. It was something that I definitely stopped wearing for a good long kind of six or seven months, but I picked it up again and I'm back into it. And if I look back at all the times that I've worn liner this year, I think this is the one that comes out on top. It's the Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Liner, and this one really does stay all day. You can put this on, it looks so rich and so black, and it definitely stays looking like that until you take it off. It doesn't smudge, it doesn't go grey at all, so I really love that about it. It also has a great applicator, it's one of the sort of felt tip pen liners, and it's a very thin point, a very thin nib, so you can get a really great flick with this. Category of best mascara was a very, very easy one to pick. In fact, I just knew it was going to be this one. It's the L'Oreal Telescopic Carbon Black Mascara, or if you're in the UK, the extra black version. I absolutely adore it. I just love it so much. There's nothing that makes my lashes look like this. And I say this all the time, but I'm just so surprised at how good it is because the brush just looks like absolutely nothing. It's so thin and there's barely any long bristles on it at all, but it just defines my lashes in a way that nothing else has ever done. It separates them, it makes them look super thick and also really long. So this, I just think, will be my favourite mascara for all time now. And I feel like I also have to give this product a quick mention, and I'm gonna put this one in the category of best primer, and it's the Estee Lauder Little Black Primer. It doesn't really look like it goes on to your lashes. It looks like nothing's happening when you're brushing this through, but you leave it for a few seconds, then put on your mascara, and it just changes the way your mascara looks. No matter what I've used this with, it just makes your lashes look longer and thicker, more defined, and just sort of perfectly spaced. That's the thing I noticed the most with this. Sometimes my lashes can clump together and they don't look particularly even but when I have this on it just doesn't happen at all so this one gets a shout out as being an amazing primer. Okay we are on to the final four the category of lips and I have favourite lip pencil, favourite lip balm, favourite nude and favourite bold to finish us off today. Lip pencil isn't really something that I wear a lot even when it comes to bold lipsticks I tend to just whack them on and forget about lip pencil beforehand but I found a nude lip pencil this year that I really really love. It's from MAC and it's the shade Boldly Bare. It's basically just a slightly warmer, slightly pinker version of my own lip colour and I use this pretty much daily just to define my lips. They're not the most even lips so I like to kind of even them out with this. So favourite lip balm and this is kind of more of a coloured lip balm than an actual skincare lip balm which I will get to in the second video. This is the Clarins Instant Light Lip Balm Perfector. The ones in the squeezy tube which I think are the instant light glosses had such a massive following but personally I never really liked them. But then these came out and I just fell in love. I think they're the perfect kind of sheer, very light tinted lip product. This is my favourite, it's the colour 01, which I think is the coral colour, and it just gives such a nice natural finish. I tend to keep this in the pocket of my coat and just put it on whenever I need a bit of lip colour. And then finally, lipstick favourites of the year. These are always a really hard one to narrow down, so I go for a nude category and then a bold category. And actually both of these are quite new discoveries, but I picked them for the sheer amount of times that I have worn them this year. It's probably just eclipsed all the other lipsticks I own completely. So the first one is from Erin. It's not a very nude colour, but for me, it's about as nude as I like to go. I can't really go paler than this, or it just really washes me out. It's such a pretty coral colour, which kind of translates to a really light pink on my lips. It's just the perfect everyday shade. I pick this up so often, and I absolutely love it. And then favourite bold lipstick of the year, which of course has to be a red for me, is one that will come as no surprise to you because I have worn this to death this month. It's the Hourglass Opaque Rouge in Raven, just probably the perfect red 
I've ever come across. It's not orangey, it's not blue, it's just perfectly smack bang in the middle of red. And it's also in one of my favourite lipstick formulas of all time. The Opaque Rouges are so pigmented, they last forever. Honestly, these will be on your lips until you decide to take them off. And I just haven't come across a red that I love more than this one this year. So it definitely wins for me as the best bold lip product of 2015. So those are all my makeup favourites from the past year. Let's just pray that this hasn't turned into a 20 minute rambling video. I apologise again if you haven't been able to understand what I'm saying. Throughout this video I've broken into spontaneous coughing fits about seven times since I started filming this, but never mind, we got through it. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this. These are definitely my favourite kinds of videos to film. I find it really interesting how much my makeup tastes and makeup preferences change over the course of the year. So again I will link all my previous favourites videos down below for you. I'll do a playlist of my monthly ones from this year and then also a couple of my yearly roundups. So that's a few little bits for you to catch up on until part two of this video comes out, which is gonna be my favorite skincare bits from the last year. So that is when you will see me next. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a like if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new as well, and I will see you all soon. Bye.